When you're using mineral silicate, true mineral silicate coatings like high mineral coatings, you're gonna get a perm rating of a minimum of 77 perms compared to your breathability of a brick of about 22. So that's gonna allow any moisture that gets into the substrate to naturally breathe. What's up YouTube? We have a really special video coming at you today. We're painting the facade of a 1920s Philly Row home with Kymet Mineral Paint. A big part of what we do is restore and stabilize dilapidated masonry homes in the city of Philadelphia. A lot of the damage we see is caused by something as simple as painting over brick with the wrong type of paint. The first part of this video is a little bit more technical. We're joined by Perry Robinson from Kime Paint. He's going to talk to us about the products we're using, some considerations we have to make when painting older masonry structures, and he's going to share some tips for success. The second part of the video shows us actually applying the paint. Three of us knocked out this two-story facade in just under three hours. No special tools, no special prep. We use rollers and brushes from our local hardware store. Doesn't get simpler than that. So often in Philadelphia, brick is painted with elastomeric or latex paints and it ends up doing so much damage. It looks good for 10 years, ends up trapping moisture. You get cracking, you get spalling, you get degradation. We spent about $15,000 to have the front of this house rebuilt. So we want to make sure to paint it, but do it the right way and maintain breathability. Perry's going to talk about some of the products we can use and uh, you know, why it's a great choice for older brick houses. Thanks, Asha. I really appreciate it. So Kime Mineral Paints has been around since 1878. Kime is actually the namesake of the company. Uh, been around in Bavaria since 1878, and we've been in the U.S. since 1905. We actually have a subsidiary here in North Carolina, uh, and we've been selling Kime paints over 100 years, mineral silicate paints in the U.S. So applications like this are a perfect fit for mineral silicate paints. We're going to allow the substrate to be breathable while also protecting it for decades to come. Awesome. What, uh, what products are we using? So we got a couple different applications here. So we have our mineral masonry paint, which is going to be a two coat application system, which is going to protect the surface while allowing it to be naturally breathable. And then we also have contact plus grab, which is going to be our base coat to fill in any hairline cracks that we have here. The big thing with applications are making sure the substrate is clean, clean, dry, dull, and free of salt. So we have a perfect substrate here to get working today. We know that there's no rain in the forecast for the next 12 hours, so we're gonna get our first coat on today, and then we're gonna finish up tomorrow with our second coat of application. Why should we be concerned about painting with a breathable paint rather than something we can get at Home Depot or any other generic paint store? Why do we wanna maintain breathability? What's that doing? Sasha, that's a great question. So breathability and permeability are two different things. A lot of coatings, a lot of paints out there are claiming to be breathable, and they probably are, but they have a very low perm rating. So it's very important to look at your products and make sure that they have a higher perm rating than the substrate you're going on. Most of this masonry and brick is about a 22. So you want to use a product that's more breathable, otherwise we're going to capture moisture inside the substrate. That's going to cause degradation and then eventually for the coating to fail. So when you're using mineral silicate, true mineral silicate coatings like Kime Mineral coatings, you're going to get a perm rating of a minimum of 77 perms compared to your breathability of a brick of about 22. So that's going to allow any moisture that gets into the substrate to naturally breathe. So it's worth noting that so many of the projects that we do that have been painted, they have really, really extensive masonry damage. They have step cracking, they have spalling, they have bulging, and it's, you might pay a couple dollars more for paint that's totally breathable like Kime paints, but the damage that you're doing is, you know, in the thousands to tens of thousands of dollars. So for us, when we have brick that's uncoated, it's really important that we use something that's gonna do no harm, do no damage, and it's gonna last for a long, long time. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think a big part about why people are so hesitant to use coatings on brick for such a long period of time is they saw this extreme degradation and that the coatings would be failing. With mineral silicate coatings, you're gonna get anywhere from two to three decades without even doing a recoat. So you're getting extended lifespan while also protecting the facade. We're gonna be applying a mineral silicate paint today. We often hear you know, people say milk paints, lime paints. Why are we not doing a lime wash? Why are we doing mineral paints on this brick? Sasha, that's a great question. So there's different types of actual mineral paint, lime washes, milk paints. There's a bunch of different things on the market. Uh, mineral silica paints are the most durable application. That's because they're gonna chemically fuse with the surface and last decades. Mineral paints are very different than lime wash in the fact that lime wash also are gonna cure to the surface, but degradate very quickly from two different things. Freeze thaw cycles, so anywhere, especially here in the Northeast, we're gonna have issues with freeze thaw and also acid rain. So from pollution in major cities or metropolitan areas, they tend to degradate very quickly over time. Some people like more of that washed look 
and that's a great fit for lime wash. But if you're looking for something to be consistent for decades to come, you're really gonna look towards mineral paints. So we've done most of the prep already. We've taken the paint off, we've stripped it. What's, um, we didn't consult with you guys before we did this, but we wanna know what's the safest way to remove paint? What's the easiest way? What's the most cost-effective way? If someone has a painted facade, how can they rectify that? Absolutely, so it really depends on what you're working with, right? Is there many coats of paint? What type of paint it is? So you kinda of wanna get a general idea of what you're working with. Always mechanically removing is gonna be the easiest way and probably cause the least degradation. So scraping, wire brushing off would be my first way. Second way can be through a chemical removal. So you usually wanna use something biodegradable so you do not hurt the environment, but that will help unbond the substrate and then you can usually use some kind of mechanical removal to get the rest of the coating off. The third way that you can use is pressurized water. So pressurized water is good, but you have to remember that you're putting water into the substrate. So if there's any issues or you have a very thin wall or there's any cracks, you're gonna put that water directly into the facade. So you need to be very careful with your application or your cleaning process. So we've heard, you know, when you pressure wash, just be careful because you can actually remove the fire coating of a brick. Is there truth to that? Absolutely. So people got to be very careful with the PSI that they're using. You never really want to use more than 2,000 PSI when you're removing a coating. At 3,000 PSI, you'll actually remove the fire face of a brick. You'll degradate uh, the actual mortar joints, and you can cause severe damage to anything older like brownstone, sandstone, or limestone. So the substrate's clean, dry, dull, and sound. So you wanna make sure your structure's sound. We don't wanna paint over everything that's loose, obviously. We wanna make sure that it's dry. We have a perfect day today. It's in the low, uh, high 70s, low 80s today. Beautiful out, we have no rain in the forecast. And the substrate's completely dry. So you've done your washing previous, sure. so we're good to go for an application. So what we're really looking for is the perfect application temperature time and that we have a dry substrate to work with. You know, we didn't do a perfect job. We got, you know, 99.9% .9 of the paint off. There's a couple little places that we just couldn't get off. Uh, is that going to be a problem or how, how close to perfection do we need to get? Yeah, no, great question. So no issue whatsoever. So with the sole silicate paints that we're using today, not only can you just go over bare masonry, but also any previously coated latex. So we've gotten most of it down, so we're getting optimal breathability without causing too much destruction to the surface. So we're not only gonna be able to bond chemically directly to the surface here, but also to any of the previously existing coating that's here as well. That sounds like it's easier work for us. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, 100%. All right, Perry, so what kind of tools do we need? Uh, is it general painting supplies? Does it need to be sprayed? Can it be rolled? Can it be brushed? And uh, yeah. Great question. So it's really straightforward. Once again, really depends on the facade you're looking at, what you have as far as accessibility, uh, what you feel comfortable with as far as painting. But this product can be brushed, rolled, or sprayed today because of the size of the facade and what we're working with. We're going to be brushing and rolling the application. Awesome. Well, we are 100% sold on the product, obviously. We bought it. We're ready to use it. We're excited. Um, yeah, guys, let's get to work. All right, so we're ready to get started. So what's our first step? The first step on this actual project is to be filling in the cracks. So with the Contact Plus Grab, we have a little bit of aggregate here. So instead of bridging over cracks like a Loxon XP, a Sherwin-Williams, or a Benjamin Moore product would do, we're actually gonna fill them in here so we stay completely breathable. There's over 100 years of manufacturing wisdom in every drop of paint we're using. And what that gives us is easy to use, easy to apply paint. We're getting great coverage, great absorption, and we don't have any specialized tools or applicators. We're using a high quality 3 inch brush for cutting and a couple 9 inch acrylic rollers with half inch nap. It really doesn't get much easier than that. Alright guys, we're popping this open. We have a mixing attachment on the drill, uh, the little guy today. Uh, it's important that we make sure that the paint is mixed pretty thoroughly. Uh, we don't want anything stuck at the bottom, we want it all homogenized. So we're just going to give this a good mix for a couple minutes. Hey Perry, what's the best way to clean these tools when we're all done with them? Uh, just hot water and a little bit of Dawn or dish detergent would be the best way. Excellent. Also, I'm not wearing a mask when I'm above this or any respirator. Do I have to worry about any uh, VOCs or anything else? No, Sasha, this is the healthiest paint you're ever going to use. Uh, no VOCs, there's no contaminants, no plasticizers, no biocides, no mildecides. It's literally the healthiest paint you can use. We chose to paint right before we installed our windows and capping. That saves us a ton of time cutting, taping, and protecting. One thing you have to be really diligent about is cleaning up splatters and drips quickly. Once this paint dries in masonry, it's tenacious. It's going to bond and it's not going to want to come off. 
We submitted the request to have our power lines covered by our utility company. They came in time for a second coat. Always exercise extreme caution when working around power lines. We're nowhere near uninsulated lines and we've had our electricians verify the condition of our service entry. We're also using non-conductive poles and ladders. We always like to say though, safety is not an accident and you can never be too careful. Beautiful. Look at that. Teamwork makes the dream work. It really does though. <laughs>